if there's one good thing you can say about Nazis is you know that they are your enemy. No doubt about it. You see one of those racist idiots walking down the street, giving an interview with a reporter, you just want to punch him in the head. Ouch. But within movements of liberation, there are actors within our ranks that claim to be our allies, but who are really not. Putting aside police infiltrators and informants who pose a real threat, we'd like to talk to you about non-governmental organizations or NGOs. NGOs have a sordid history of infiltrating, pacifying and co-opting movements. Now, not all NGOs engage in these practices and some actually do good work. But in recent memory, we've seen far too many examples of environmental NGOs royally screwing over indigenous folks engaged in land defense. Take the battle for the Great Bear Rainforest in Western Canada, where Greenpeace and forest ethics joined the indigenous grassroots forest protectors. Later to sideline them and negotiate with logging companies to save a fraction of one of the most important temperate rainforests left in the world. What the logging companies got in return was a promise that environmental NGOs would not protest or oppose logging in Western Canada. This deal became a template for an even bigger betrayal. At stake this time was the Canadian Boreal Forests, one of the largest continuous forests in the world. This time, Greenpeace and Forest Ethics teamed up with the Canadian Forest Products Association, i.e. the logging industry, for a similar deal. Once again, indigenous communities who have land in the boreal forest were not consulted, and NGOs promised not only to stop anti-logging campaigns in the boreal forest, but also to defend the industry. One interesting piece of the agreement is uh, with Greenpeace, David Suzuki, Forest Ethics, Canadian Parks and Wilderness on our side. When someone else comes and tries to bully us, the agreement actually requires that they come and work with us in repelling the attack and we'll be able to say, fight me, fight my gang. The latest deal of this type was signed between NGOs like Forest Ethics and Alberta's Tar Sands Industry. Given the public backlash of the previous two agreements, this one was done behind closed doors so we don't know all the details. What we do know is that oil companies agreed to place limits in tar sands extraction in exchange for the enviros backing down under opposition to pipeline construction. We now turn our attention to another movement enemy hidden in plain sight. That is the federally funded tribal governments that rule over and police indigenous communities. In the US, the so-called sovereign tribes govern federal government assigned pieces of land called reservations or reserves in the case of Canada. Their leaders are members of the community and are chosen through elections and have little or nothing to do with traditional governing structures of indigenous communities they oversee. Historically, although there are some exceptions, tribal government officials are more likely to cut deals with mining, logging and other extractive industries to exploit traditional territory of indigenous nations they belong to. This is land outside the reservation and land in which they have no jurisdiction. Both in the US and Canada, tribal councils have their own police forces. Let's not forget that Indian police killed Chief Sitting Bull at the Standing Rock Reservation, and in my community of Ganesadaga, Mohawk police shot and severely crippled Oka Crisis veteran Joe David. He later passed away from those injuries. Today we see the same thing happening in Standing Rock. Just this month, Bureau of Indian Affairs cops brutally beat a water protector fighting to stop Dapple in their campaign to clear out the last remaining people out of the protest camps. You a motherfucking sellout. I'd love to see all the veterans who have skills, who have some expertise, put those skills and expertise to use in defense of indigenous people and homelands. If they aren't willing to do that, then their co-optation and collaboration with the United Snakes of America has been complete.